I was going to say. It's my son. Good morning, everybody. I'm trying to get your attention. Good evening, everybody. Glad you're here tonight. It's a special night. Brent, Vernon, and Sam are here tonight. We're going to do just a couple of songs to get started in worship. It is the Waymaker service, so he is the Waymaker. Amen? Amen. Let's give him our praise. Let's all stand up. firm foundation amen our solid rock he wants no no he wants Jesus we're so glad that we can count on you you will never fail yes. the old hymn Jesus never fails Jesus never fails heaven and earth may pass away but we know that Jesus will never fail That truth is still today. In our lives, we know we can build on you. Our foundation is you. Your word is where we stand. And your presence in our lives gives us that strength. Your Holy Spirit gives us that knowledge to know exactly what to say, know exactly where to go, what to do. You are our power and our strength. And we thank you for that. Tonight, Lord, we give you honor and praise. And tonight we ask you, Lord, to come in a unique way through a man that's gifted in so many different ways, musically and and, and artistically and in a very unique talent of ventriloquism, Lord. It's a way that sometimes our hearts can be open. Would you speak, Holy Spirit, tonight? Would you just anoint Brent tonight to minister with all that he has, Lord? Bless him, I pray. And Lord, may this time be a time of joy, a time of of just hearing and knowing that we are so loved by you, God. We give you praise for everything tonight that will happen. It's because of you, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I know you didn't come here to see me. I'm not going to take it personally, okay? No, I'm glad you're here. I did make you coffee. Did you see I made you coffee? And hot water and a little... Okay, so it was water. All right, so it wasn't that exciting, but... But there's always something exciting to come and be a part of here, and, and uh, we've been anticipating you coming for some time, Brent. And how many of you were here last time Brent was here? Oh, good, quite a few. I think it was like, we were trying to think, like 2019, something like that. So, but this guy lives way down in Florida, so, you know, it takes a while to get up here. But he, you know, got his minivan, packed everything in there, and here he came. But we're thrilled that you guys are here. And I know some of you probably already know a little bit about him, but maybe those that you don't. Uh, Brent is a singer-songwriter and, of course, a ventriloquist based in South Florida since about 1995. Brent and his pal Sam, whom you'll meet in a moment, have crisscrossed the United States countless times, sharing a variety of concerts and presentations in churches, schools, and special events. Uh, Brent's music and ministry and travels have taken him to all the 50 states, in Ireland and Australia, Canada, and the Caribbean. He has a uh, product back there. You'll see his uh, uh, CDs and what have you, and maybe some of the books. I think you also write children's books as well. So you can see a man of many talents. Well, there you are. Where did you all come from? Did you come to see the ventriloquist guy? Well, let's make him welcome. Brent, Vernon, and Sam. Good evening. I'm I'm so happy to be here tonight. Thank you all so much for this opportunity. It's just really good to be back. I just really appreciate uh, every opportunity to share, and I always look forward to coming out out here. Those of you who I haven't met, as as he said, um, I'm Brent, and I've just been trucking around the country for a bunch of years. And so tonight I'm going to share a little bit of music uh, for you, maybe with you. And uh, here in a few minutes I'm going to introduce you to my buddy Sam, because I can't go anywhere without him. So uh, for those of you who don't know who 
Sam is. Back when I was just probably seven or eight years old, my mom and dad, one year for Christmas, I don't even, I don't even think I asked for this, uh, but they bought me what's called a ventriloquist figure, and uh, this is something I've done ever since. So I have a buddy to introduce y'all to in just a few minutes, okay? All right. So um, I was thinking today, um, I, I don't always remember what, what songs I sing from place to place, and so maybe I, you, I might have sung a song or two tonight that you might, you might have heard before. I don't expect you to remember, but this is just a little tune that I, I love to share kind of because I, I feel like such a spoiled brat. People have already this evening been so kind and so gracious. Whoops, excuse me. I'm getting started early with the music. Uh, so so gracious uh, to me. And I, I we live in a world with a lot of fear and a lot of things to be concerned of uh, uh, about. But just to recognize that all over there are still good, God-loving, warm-hearted people. And so this is a song that I wrote a few years ago that just says how I feel tonight. It says it's good to be here. All right? It says like... Places I could be right now. It's a great big world, a great big world. I'd like to travel every corner of the globe. Whoa. To catch a vision of a setting sun as an eagle soars, wings unfurled. Or hear the music in the mountain rivers flow. But there is nothing quite so beautiful. The smiles on each face And it's good to be here, right here on your welcome mat Where every smile's sincere, but even more than that Here the door is open, and love is always near And it's good to be here, right here with the genuine Where every heart is full, but especially mine The things are just as good as they appear to be here. I've seen an awful lot of fly by nights, fickle hearts, shifty eyes, and maybe this is just a simple point of view. Ooh. But you could wander anywhere at all, you could roam the earth, comb the skies. There's nothing better than a heart that's warm and true and there is nowhere quite so wonderful as in the company of friends like you and it's good to be here right here on your welcome mat where every smile sincere but even more than that here the door is open and love is always near and it's good to be Right here with the genuine Where every heart is full But especially mine The things are just as good As they appear It's good to be here Oh, there is Nothing quite so beautiful As the smiles on each face Where every smile's sincere, but even, even more than that, here the door is open, and love is always near, and it's good to be here, right here with the genuine, where every heart is full, but especially mine, the things are just as good as they appear, it's good to be here. To be right here, right now, right here and now is so good to be here. It is. 
so good. Thank you so much, y'all. Really, I appreciate that. Um, I probably, I, if I sang that song last time, which I probably did, I probably also shared this story. But not too long after I, I wrote that little tune, I recorded it, and uh, I got an email from a friend of mine. He and his family were living in uh, Central America, and he said, Brent, we just downloaded some of your music. And he said, uh, we're having a little bit of a discussion in our house about one of the lines in that song, there's a line in that song that says, it's good to be here with the, with the genuine, like genuine people. That was, that was my point. He said, he said, my kids are thinking you're saying it's good to be here with the jiggy wife. And I said, well, I don't even know what that means, but uh, God's, God's will be done. So in case you were struggling, that's, that's genuine, genuine people. But anyway, really is just so good to be here. I'm going to share a couple little tunes with you before I kind of change gears, because I know you kids are like, where's the dude, aren't you? I, I know how it is. So uh, my buddy Sam uh, is in the building, and he's going to come talk to y'all in just a, just, a, just a few minutes. But um. I want to share a little t- tune that um, not too long after I was with you all, um, I, was, I was home in Florida, and I was thinking about some things, and, and growing up, I've kind of always been sort of plagued with this sense of, uh, I don't know, I'm, I don't know, at least I, I think I'm selectively perf- I have a bit of a perfectionist about things, and growing up, I'd look around at other people and say, well, man, I can't, I can't uh, play the piano like she does, or I don't look like he does, and I don't have that kind of money, and, you know, big... Oh, Big long lists of all these things we don't have and uh, can't uh, can't seem to grasp, and, and especially now in the world of social media, you know, you just start scrolling and you suddenly feel uh, not good enough, right? And that's not how God wants us to live our lives, is it? I've come to the place where it's just, you know what, God, whatever you give me, what, whether it's a little bit, whether it's a lot, I just want to be faithful with that, Lord, and and not worry about all that stuff because it's not that's not up to me. And uh, what is up to me is what I do with what I've been given. And I got to tell you, all that's just a freeing place to be. And so this is a little tune that I, I, I wrote. I guess you could say it's a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, it's truth, but it's also therapeutic, I guess, a little bit. It says, Lord, what, whatever it is that you give me, I just want to be faithful to give it back to you. And then you will multiply, says this. This is what I'm holding, maybe it's not much All of my belongings, all my skills and such There's nothing else I have, Lord it's all that I can bring Sometimes I feel the pressure to measure and compare My talents and possessions to someone over there But all the while you ask You just ask for my everything. And whatever's in my hands, be it great, be it small, Lord, whatever's in my hands, won't you use it all? Lord, I lay it at your feet, don't know how or all the reasons why. But whatever's in my hands, very soon you're going to mourn. Supply. I think of all you've given, the kindness you have shown. There's nothing I could ever truly call my own. For every perfect gift, every gift is from above. So why then would I glory? Why ever would I boast, save in the cross of Jesus, the one who gave the most? No sacrifice compares to that greatest gift of love. And whatever's in my hands, be it great, be it small, Lord, whatever's in my hands, won't you use it all? Lord, I lay it at your feet, don't know how or all the reasons. Why? But whatever's in my hands, very soon you're gonna multiply. I love this last verse. It says, "This you take what I surrender and you cause it all to grow. You multiply these blessings in ways I cannot know, and I won't understand." 
till my faith is finally sight. What comes of this equation, Lord, only you can say. Let heaven hold that mystery until the glorious day when it all will be revealed in that land of love and lies. And whatever's in my hands, be it great, be it small, Lord, whatever's in my hands, won't you use it all, Lord, I lay your feet don't know how or all the reasons why but whatever's in my hands oh lord whatever's in my hands yes whatever's in my hands very soon you're gonna multiply Just give it to God. Put it in his hands. That's a, that's a beautiful, beautiful uh, place to be. Let me just share one more little tune, because I, I, I know I keep uh, saying that, but, uh, but I, I'm keenly aware that you kids are, are excited about my buddy. Um, uh, let me just share this little, little tune. I, I love, I'm going to talk about this here in a, in, in a few minutes, but I, I love, I'm a big Christmas lover. I don't know if any kids love Christmas time, but I love the Christmas season so much. But as a follower of Jesus, uh, uh, you know, Christmas is very, very special. That's when, you know, Jesus was born, and we, we celebrate that. We commemorate that, and we thank him for coming. But, um, you know, we just came through a season as a church, you know, the, the season through Holy Week and, and all in, the, in the days and weeks leading up to that where we really think about the price that Jesus paid for us on the cross. And uh, and so, so so much gratitude for what he did. Um, several years ago, I was I was uh, driving to a, I was invited to be part of one of those uh, sunrise services on Easter Sunday morning, and I was driving to this service, and I was thinking about the fact that I'm a church kid, and I was raised in a wonderful home where I heard the story of Easter, I heard what it was all about, and again and again and again. So I had a point of reference and and all of these kinds of things. But I started thinking. What if it was my first time? What if I just showed up there at the, and saw the tomb was empty and didn't put every, all of Jesus' words together? Boy, that roller coaster of emotions that they must have experienced, that his followers must have experienced. But then to realize and then to see Jesus and to, and, and to, and to, to kind of have it all dawn on you, what a, what a glorious, glorious morning. So I know we just came through Easter, but I'd like to share, as a, as a wannabe songwriter, I thought, I got it. This, if it weren't for Easter, Easter changed everything, right? That's, that's really, that's why we're here, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that we might live lives uh, uh, that are, that are uh, uh, you know, a uh, new life. So uh, this, was my, this was my attempt at, at writing an Easter, Easter a song, okay? And this just talks about the, the joy of the fact that Jesus Christ, love himself, is alive again, all right? It says this. Every, everything changes because of that, and I'm so, so, so grateful for, for that. Well, y'all, um, let me change gears here, as I keep saying. Um, I, Sam is in the building, okay? But bef before, before, right before I do that, I want to do something a little different, okay? But I think you kids will still like this, okay? So uh, when you came in tonight, and I know from my previous visits here, some of you know that I, I, I write and illustrate kids' books. Uh, for those of you who didn't know, when I was a kid, I loved to doodle and draw and kind of create stuff. So my mom would go off to these yard sales, and she'd bring, <laughs> she'd bring home, like, you know, this, this art supplies, and so I'd scribble and create stuff and create characters. Well, about 14, 15 years ago, I said, I really want to get serious about this, and so I started to write and illustrate kids' books. Any of you kids like to draw? Anybody like to draw pictures? Anybody here? Yeah, all right. A couple, couple of you? Yeah, that's awesome. Keep it up. Yeah, very cool. Very cool. Well, um, so I got the idea, and some of you know this, but I got the idea to write a little story about a little giraffe whose name was Audrey, who was born without a neck. Yikes. But she discovered she had a pretty good head on her shoulders after all. <laughs> so the book did really well, and uh, I wrote another one and another one about Audrey and her friends. But as I mentioned, I do love Christmas time a whole lot. And so I thought, boy, wouldn't it be fun to write a story about gingerbread? Now, now if you all know the original, remember the old, the old gingerbread man story? Remember that? So if you know it, help me out, okay? So it says like, it says this, run, run as fast as you can. Yeah, 
Yeah, you kind of sort of, yeah, yeah, I think, yeah, there's kind of a little bit of rumble. You can't catch me on the gin. I started thinking about this, though. What would happen if it was more than just one cookie? What would have happened if it was like a whole pan of cookies? So I wrote a story called The Ginger Brood, okay? And, and a few Christmases ago, I thought, wouldn't it be fun, in addition to Sam, wouldn't it be fun to introduce the kids and big kids along the way to one of my gingerbread cookie pals. Would you guys like to meet him? Would you, guys, would you like to meet one of them? Okay, all right. So there's several several cookies. So which, we'll see which, which one comes out tonight. But I thought it'd be just really fun uh, to uh, let, him, let, let one of my cookie pals just say hello. Now there's, the, there's a rule. You can't eat him, okay? All right, sorry about that. I think in general, anything that talks to you, don't eat it, okay? That's, that's pretty. So um, I'm going to start some music and uh, go wake him up. And then after, after we do this, then, then I'll introduce you to Sam. Is that cool? All right, so hold on just a second. I'm going to start some music, and uh, we'll get going. All right, here we go. Kisses. All right, this is my buddy right Hi here. Hi there, folks. Boy, oh boy, what an honor to be here. Man, how's everyone doing? I'm not sure they heard me. How's everyone doing? <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. Oh, I hope that each one of you are doing so good that you can't even believe it. All right. Cool. <laughs> well, I think it's actually doing well. But anyway, this this is my uh, this is my buddy. His name is Nevin. Okay, Nevin is a pretty cool guy. Oh, so, hello, hello. I know several gingerbread cookies pretty well, uh, but of all the folks I know, I think this guy right here is the sweetest one of all. I think it is. I really do. So it might have been the recipe, but no one really knows. <laughs> Maybe so. I don't know. Maybe I just got some extra sugar. Maybe so, but how many extra dough? Have you, do you have any extra dough, Nevin? What do you think about that? Hmm? What do you think? Oh, cracker crumbs. I wish. I live a sweet but modest life. Like any good cookie, however, I always rise to the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a bad, bad joke, right? I know, I know. Pardon my half-baked humor. Most of the time, my jokes fail miserably. <laughs> I can see why, right? I can, my goodness. You so. know, when you're a cookie, and a delicious cookie, I might add, it helps to have a sense of humor. I'm always aware that someone, somewhere, just wants to consume me. Yeah, I'm sure you're always kind of looking over your shoulders, right? Man, I Seriously, guess... Seriously, man, I've had to duck and run more than one time. I I'm just a nom-nom to some folks. A nom-nom. You know, that sounds like the title of your autobiography, right? Something like that. Life, Life as, as a nom-nom. Nom. Nom. <laughs> <laughs> That's so silly. But, but yet through it all, you seem to have a real, like a good outlook. You have a good perspective and, and, and just a nice spirit. Go on, go on. No, I'm just kidding. That is so nice of you. It's really not that hard. Why do you say that? Hmm? Well, I realize that when I wake up every day, I have a lot for which to be grateful. It's such a beautiful world. Especially when you know where to look. That's a really great perspective, isn't it? It really is. Yeah, I appreciate that. Right? Is if that right? you don't look for the good, you'll go stale real fast. Trust me, I am a confection. I have to stay fresh and aromatic. <laughs> so you want to stay smelling good. Is that what you're telling us here? I do, I do. And along with that delicious scent, I really try to spread joy as best I can. They say it's contagious, like in a good way. So... So, Nevin, you know, word around your village is that people always know when you're about to show up, even before they see you or smell you, they always know. Uh oh so, who told you that? <laughs> <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yes, you do. That's right. Ding, dong, yep. ding, dong, ding, ding dong, right ding. <laughs> <laughs> he loves bells. He does. I like, love bells. What kind of bells do you like? Chimes. And even doorbells. And church bells. And bicycle bells. Wait, that's, that's not a bicycle bell. Let's try that again. Bicycle bells. Who's doing that? That's not a bicycle bell, last I checked. Oh, boy. 
Yeah, I guess so. Oh, boy, there it is again. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, we have a bell tower in our village, and sometimes they let me go ring the bells to my heart's content. So fun, so fun. Just because, right? Just because? All for joy, I say. All for joy. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome, man. Very cool. Sometimes this world can be a scary place. It's not as often that a smiling face is there to comfort like a warm embrace or bring me cheer. Oh, but if I'm sad or if I feel unwell and hear the ringing of a distant bell, it lifts my spirit like the first Noel on a midnight clear. So when I see a bell, I ring it. something healing in the sound of a church bell pealing yeah when i see a bell i ring it won't you ring won't you sing along ding dong ding dong ding dong ding oh i love it so much sometimes this world can be a scary place it's not as often that a smiling face there to comfort like a warm embrace or bring me cheer. But if I'm sad or if I feel unwell and hear the ringing of a distant bell, it lifts my spirit like the first Noel on a midnight clear. So when I see a bell, I ring it. Oh, I sure do. No, I'm not holding back. I bring it. Mm -hmm. I bring it. Cause it seems that there's something Oh, I love it. I can tell you love it, man. Aren't bells just irresistible? Well, to each his own. But, man, as your friend, I find you pretty irresistible, dude. Thank you so much for coming out tonight to lift our spirits. What did you say? Like the first Noel on a midnight clear? Is, is, that, is that right? I think that's what he said. Anyway, I appreciate that's it. That's right. You get the point. I do get the point. Now, we got to go. Uh, but uh, we just want to say, I just say thank you so much. I'm so glad that you uh, joined oh, us. Oh, I am, too. Wow, I'm just so honored to be here. This is not a cookie cutter audience. You all are amazing and so special. Don't forget to ring those bells, share those smiles, and be a friend to someone. All right, sounds good. Bye, Nevin. Bye, everyone. Oh, no, I think I'm gonna cry. No, no, for real. Oh, man, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> Crisco tears are the worst, I'll just tell you that. Well, then you better go dry in those eyes, right, okay? so. It's emotions like that that go shortening your life. Oh, so Get bad. it? Shortening? Oh, boy. Ah, never mind. All right. Bye, everyone. Okay, I'll be right back. Well, I hope you, I hope you, I hope y'all enjoyed uh, my buddy Nevin. He's he's been a lot of fun. Interestingly enough, whenever I talk to one of my uh, gingerbread uh, buddy pals, I, who I, I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm the one that's been in the oven. So I see where they warm, warm me up a little bit. But anyway, so well, y'all, uh, let me go ahead and introduce you to my my pal Sam. Okay, you, you kids are like enough already. Let's let's see the dude. So uh, let me go wake him up and. Uh, Really, just such a such a uh, an honor to be here again tonight, and we really we've been looking forward to this. So I'll be right back. Okay, give me a few seconds. Well, this is uh, this is my buddy Sam. Sam, why don't you say hey to everybody? How y'all doing? 
Hello, hello. Boy, Sam, isn't it, isn't it good to be back? We just we really have been. It's been a few years, and uh, <laughs> we really are just so so happy. I apologize uh, for Sam's bad hair. That's, a, that's something, something uh, um, right? I need some product. Need some product on that hair. That's 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 for sure. So, anyway, so um, Sa- uh, Sam and I have been uh, traveling for quite a long time, uh, and uh, and so right before I got Sam, uh, I had a little uh, fella that was similar to Sam. Right before Sam joined me, his name was Will, and uh, Will was just a little bit smaller than than Sam, but he was very similar. And so um, he's dead. No, Sam. He's not. He's not. He's he's not. He's not. He's very. He's very much. Uh, he's he's just, he's with us. He's he's in retirement. So uh, that's how that's how it goes. So I don't know why you said that. Well, I don't know, man. I was just. I heard you say Thy will be done, and all of a sudden we got a new coffee table. Sam, that's pretty dark, man. That's pretty dark. But no, <laughs> Will's just fine. We're all good. We're all good. But anyway, are you, are you good, Sam? I think so. I think so. Okay, now we we just have a, a, a few minutes here tonight, and but we, we want to. I know I know you love to sing, right? I do. Okay, so I thought um, maybe you'd want to want to share a little song or something. Well, actually, if it's okay, I want to go way back tonight and share a story, a Bible story. It's one of my very favorite. Oh, well, Sam, Sam has a few Bible stories that he kind of circles around to. He really loves to share. So chances are, one of our visits over the years, um, I'm not, I don't remember how many times we've been here, but maybe you shared this with, with, with them before. So I don't care. You, oh, you don't go. You don't go. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so, it's fine. You know, so, so um, <laughs> it's a good story? It is a good story. I want, to, I want y'all to guess what story it is. Sam, there's a, there's a lot of Bible stories out there, and the Bible's a big old thick book. So can you give us a... So just, let's just keep to the kids. Any of the kids want to, so you want to give us a, uh, like a hint? Need a clue? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I need a clue. So, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, are you thinking? Okay. Well, this is a story about a kid in the Bible with a really cool name. That's a pretty good hint. Do any of you kids want to guess a kid in the Bible with a cool name? Anybody want to see? There's a lot of kind of interesting names in the Bible, though, aren't there? So, hmm. Anybody? I'm hearing, I'm hearing some buzzing around. What, what? Anybody at all? Hmm. What? Oh, I heard Moses. <gasps> no. No. I, did I hear David? Mm-mm. Not David. Okay. All right. Sam, why are you grunting at me? Oh, oh, oh. Who would, who would Sam think had a pretty cool name in the Bible? Bingo. That's the best kid in the house. That's right. All right, all right there he goes. So, so you're going to tell us about Samuel. See, the first time that I heard the story of Samuel, the person that told it to me said that Samuel was a really good listener. Okay. So I thought that meant he had big ears like Dumbo or like you. No, Sam, being a good... Being a good uh, being a good listener is not about the size of your ears. It's about what you do once you hear something. Come again? You heard me. What you do once you hear something. Well, you mean like being obedient. That's exactly right. My mama, y'all, y'all she, this is serious. She used to tell me, she used to, her dad looked it up in the dictionary. They were very serious about this matter of obedience. They said obedience is what you do when you're told without asking questions. That last part kind of bothered me. But anyway, anyway, that's how, that's how I was raised. They were very, very strong about obedience. Well, I was thinking of moms. Samuel's mom, her, her name was Hannah. Anybody here named Hannah? Anybody here? We have any Hannahs here? <gasps> we got a Hannah. Hey, Hannah. All right. Yeah. So, and his dad's name was Elkanah. Anybody here named Elkanah? Any no 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 Elkanahs in the house? No. Okay. Before Samuel was born, Hannah didn't have any kids, but she really wanted to. Bad. So every year she would go to the tabernacle and she would pray and cry. And asked the Lord to give her a child. And you know what she told God? What'd she tell God? She said, Lord, if you give me a child, I'm going to give him right back to you. Well, how's she going to do that? You know, 747 to heaven? Oh, come on, Sam. That's, that's kind of that's corny, man. So, so, what, so what, what happened? Well, one year in particular, Hannah went to the tabernacle. And I don't mean to make fun, but the Bible says she was in there talking to God. But she looked a little bit, um, you know, 
well, why, why, why do you, what, where, where are you going with that? She looked a little off. Why, why do you say that, Sam? Well, she's talking to God, and I think maybe her eyes were closed, and I know that her mouth was moving, but you couldn't hear any noise. So she looked a little bit like this, okay? <laughs> it's disturbing. I'll give you that. Okay, so, 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 so what happened? Well, Eli, he was the high priest there. He saw her, and he said, this lady has a situation. Yeah, I, I guess so. But when he finally talked to her, he saw deeper, and he said, Hannah, you go home. God has heard your request. Well, that's pretty cool, right? That Hannah had the knowledge that God had heard her prayers and that was listening to her, and uh, right? Yeah, it wasn't too long later before Hannah found out she's going to have a She's going to have a baby? Yeah, that's what I said. And when, wasn't too long later, she did. She, oh, she did, that's right. And she, and she named him Samuel. That's exactly right. Okay, so, so uh, what, what, uh, what about her promise to God to give Samuel back to God? Back to God. Well, you know what she did, y'all? When Samuel got old enough, she just took him back to the tabernacle and dropped him off. No, let me clarify that. Let me clarify that. She did, she did bring Samuel back to the tabernacle and let him stay there, right, with Eli so he could work for God. And in a very real sense, she gave Samuel back to God, right? Yep, yep. Cool. What? What's the next thing in the story, Sam? What? You forgot? Sam forgot this part of this. That's okay. That's all right. <laughs> That's okay. Have y'all ever been up in front of people and your mind just goes blank? I have done that. Yeah. Okay. So, I, Sam, I, I know you know this. I'll ha have to help him out a little bit, okay? Every year, Hannah would come to the tabernacle, right? And she would bring, come on, Sam, you know this. She would bring Samuel a, a, a piece of cheesecake. Yeah. <laughs> That's not in my Bible, man. I don't know what version you're reading. But no, she'd bring like a cloak, right, or a robe or some kind of garment. Lord knows we all need a good garment. That's true. That's true there. So what happened there in the tabernacle that was so important to the story? Well, that was where Samuel showed that he learned how to be a good listener. See, one night he was lying in bed. Probably starting to doze off a little bit, you know. Okay. Okay. All right, Sam. Sam, come on, man. Don't rush me, dude. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, he heard this. Sam. Well, he jumped out of bed, went running over to Eli. He said, I heard you. What did you need? And Eli said, I didn't call you. Go back to bed. So he did? Yeah, he did, but it wasn't too long later before he heard it again. Well, he jumped out of bed again, went running over to Eli. He said, I heard you this time. What did you need? And Eli said, I didn't call you this time either. Go back to bed, bucko. You know, I know I keep interrupting Sam here, but probably I'm going to guess that a lot of us here have heard the story of Samuel. And have you ever thought, what would you have done? What would, what would I have done? I've thought about this. What would I have done if you're trying to go to sleep and all of a sudden you hear someone call your name? Would you think somebody's uh, trying to play a joke on you? Or you know, nowadays you think someone left their cell phone on or something, right? Sam, Sam, maybe he thought it was his belly growling. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but need the cheesecake. That wasn't it, was it? So, 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 what, so what happened? Well, this time, it happened again that Eli caught on. He said, Samuel, when you hear that again, say, speak, for your servant hears. And that's exactly what he did, because it wasn't somebody trying to play a joke, and it wasn't his belly growling. Mm -mm. It was God. And God had something very difficult for Samuel to do, in my estimation. Well, what was, what was that? Well, Eli had some wicked sons, but he didn't do anything to stop them. So God told Samuel to tell Eli that he was in 
leg trouble. Did he, did he do it? Yeah, he did. You know, this really is, I think, an important story for all of us here. But I do look at you kids and say, we don't know how old Samuel was. He might have been 8 or 10 or 12. I don't know. Nine, nine could have been 9. But he was very young. But he was willing to do something that would seem to be pretty hard, y'all. Why? Because God told him to, right? He was willing to be, what's the word, Sam? Obedient, obedient, absolutely. So important to obey God with our whole hearts, no matter where or what or how or why. God is worthy of our trust, and, uh, and we, can, we can trust him, right? So, Sam, um, I appreciate you sharing that story. That's a, that's a big one. It's, a, it's an important one, too, and uh, I really thank you for that. Now, for just, for just, just a minute, I, I would love for you to, I know you love to sing, right? I do. And so do you have, <laughs> do you have a song for the folks? Well, I think so. Okay, well, let's go ahead and, 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 and do that for the folks, okay? All right, Sam. This is kind of an ongoing, sorry, y'all. Um, Sam, what song are you going to sing for the folks tonight, okay? Well, I suppose I should decide. Sam, not this again. Come on, man. What did you do? Did, did you not? Here's the deal. I've got so many songs that I love to sing. Sometimes it's just a little bit hard to narrow it down. Sam, you don't have that many songs that you sing. I do, too. I've got an extensive repertoire. That's a, that's a fancy word right there. Anytime I try to say that word, your mouth moves worse than it usually does. Okay, so it's <laughs> your favorite thing to say, man. Okay, so uh, do you... Uh, do you need a few seconds to do? You do. Okay. You need, Sam, Sam just needs a few seconds to figure out, think a little bit about what he's going to, not long, okay, about what he's going to share with us tonight, okay? And so while Sam's thinking, I just want to tell you kids something. And some of you have probably seen this, but we really do try to be honest. Are you thinking? Yeah, okay. Uh, we, we really do try to be honest about the fact that Sam really, you know this, Sam's really just a puppet, okay? And so I thought that Sam would briefly be willing to show you all some of the things that maybe you didn't notice, maybe you did notice, but just kind of highlight some of his special features, okay? All right, he's, he's not crazy about this part of it. But Sam, um, why don't you show him? Sam can raise his eyebrows. Did y'all notice that? Yeah, got some, all right, so got some serious, <laughs> serious windshield wipers going on, right? Yeah, so. Put some rain -X on those babies. That's right. That's rain -X. That's right. Sam can blink. Did y'all notice that? Yeah. Okay. Sam can wink. Oh, boy. I don't know where this is going, y'all. All right. <laughs> Sam's eyes can go back and forth and back and forth. His mouth can open and close, which is helpful when you're, we saw that with the whole, yeah, the whole, um, yeah, Hannah thing. And, uh, but here's the cool part. Please don't try this at home or on any of your friends or anybody at all, because keep in mind, Sam can do some things that you and I cannot do. But this is pretty cool right there. All right. There we go. Just like that. All right. Yeah, very nice. Happy Halloween. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. All right. All right. Very nice. Very nice. I sure, I sure hope that uh, jogged, your, uh, jogged your memory. It did. It did. Okay. You got a song? I do. Okay. All right. Why don't you share it for us, okay? Okay. Think of that as love. Think of that as goodness. Think of that as grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. That's a good chorus. I want you to sing it one more time, all right? Just real fast. Think of that as love. Think of that as goodness. Think of that as grace that brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Thank you. All right. 
Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let Sam go and come back for just a little bit more music uh, just bef- before we head out. But, but, but Sam, um, we, we really do appreciate the opportunity. We hope you kids especially uh, can latch on to that message, the importance of obeying God with our whole heart. So, Sam, is there anything else you want to say? I think I told you all this last time, but none of you took me, took, took me up on it. What are, you, what are you talking about? If you all ever find yourself down in South Florida... Please be sure to come say hello, just not all at one time. Pace yourself. Pace yourself. There we go. That's a good one. Bye, y'all. All right. I'll be right back, everybody. Okay. All right. Well, I hope you kids enjoyed Sam. You know, I, I am obviously not the greatest ventriloquist, but this, this past year I had, a, I, I had kind of a funny, uh, I was in Roanoke, Virginia, and, uh, and I, years ago, back when I used to travel with, remember Sam was talking about his buddy Will, our buddy Will that I used to travel. Well, when I used to bring Will out, I used to just sit him out on a chair or something for the f- first whole part of the program. He would just sit there. What's he going to do? Hopefully nothing, right? You know, so so we were we were all set up, ready to go here in Roanoke at this program, and I had him sitting out there, and I think he had like a little outfit with a bow tie or something, you know, and I got him all situated, and I walked away. Well, there was a lady at the program that night, and she uh, she just uh, sort of watched him for a, a little bit, she just kind of eyeballed him, and after a, after a while, she leaned over to a family member and she said, "Look at him sitting there like a little man." She said, <laughs> "She." She said, don't tell me you can't train them. She said, <laughs> I, said, I, said I love that. It just, I just remembered that again, because like, I actually went this past, the past year after quite a while. I went back to the same church, and I thought, oh, I remember this. I remember this church. Anyway, so, uh, well, I, I just am so thankful for the opportunity to share a little bit. I'm so grateful for what Jesus has done in my life, and I want to share just a little bit more about that before we head out. But can I, can I just uh, sort of state the obvious? We do live in a world where there's just a lot of contention, a lot of, a lot of uh, disagreement over just about anything. It's been in, this, in this world of social media, there's no stone unturned. And in the last few years, there's been so, so, uh, so much conflict in, in, in within the church and outside the church and different things about any any issue people can sort of and I started to think you know what I've hopped I've been guilty I got to be honest with you I've been guilty of hopping on Facebook and kind of getting you know just start, you know I, I, I started thinking Lord I don't want to be part of the problem I don't want to be part of the problem whatever it whatever it takes I, I want to be part of, of he, healing right what Christ has done in my life I just I don't deserve I'm so grateful for his kindness and great the grace of the Lord that's been extended to, to me I just I just don't deserve it and I don't want to do anything to maybe just maybe just pop off and hurt someone you know and and so this is a little song that says you know what right here right here and that I, I guess you can say one of the one of the gifts of COVID, that whole situation, is that I, I was on the road and obviously, you know, like so much, I had to, everything sort of shut down. And I went home for a little bit and I guess I, I found out that I got neighbors, you know, and so just started go out and dig in the dirt and yell at your neighbors and talk to them and get to be, know them a little bit better. And, and I started thinking, you know what, you don't have to, we, ministries anywhere, right, wherever God plants us. And I've, I've been thinking about that a whole lot. Lord, I want my interactions on a day-by-day basis, no matter who's looking, if I'm a platform or if I'm a Walmart, whatever, wherever. That's, that's you know. And so this is a song that says right here in this neighborhood, there's, there's people who are hurting, there's people who are misunderstood, and there's confusion, and I don't know what it always looks like, but Lord, I want to be a part of the healing, you know, I, I do, I do. And so this is a little tune that I recorded, and I hope it will connect uh, with someone here tonight. It says, Lord, I want to be your hands and your feet, it says this. Right here in this neighborhood, people are misunderstood, hurting hearts more common than we realize. Like an unrelenting rain, tears are falling, so much pain. Who is there to listen when the heart cries? Oh, spirit, move among us. 
that we might be a part of bringing grace and healing to any hurting heart. For only one is able to make us all complete. We want to be like Jesus, to be his hands and feet. Taking time to lend a hand, taking time to understand, precious time to listen to the Lord. Let us then reflect His grace any time, at any place, in all we do, in every word that's spoken. Oh, Spirit, move among us that we might be a part of bringing grace and healing. To any hurting heart, for only one is able to make us all complete. We want to be like Jesus, to be His hands and feet. God hears each prayer and knows what heart needs mended. And He sees what lies behind it all. He sees what lies behind it. Oh, may we be his hands and feet extended And go wherever he might call Oh, Spirit, move among us That we might be oh, a part Spirit, of bringing grace and healing To any hurting heart For only one is able to make us all complete we want to be like Jesus, to be his hands and feet. Oh, Spirit, move among us, that we might be a part of bringing part. grace and healing to any hurting heart. For only one is able to make us all complete. We want to be like Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. We want to be like we want to be like Jesus, to be his hands and feet. To be his hands and feet. Thank you so much. I want to leave you, just leave you with one more little song. If that one more, one more song, if that's if that's okay. And again, I always get a little paranoid. I, I, I chances are I, I might have might have shared uh, this song with you uh, at some point in the past. I gave my life to Jesus when I was 11, and I'm I'm so so thankful for that. I really am. And I was at a I was at a camp in Pennsylvania. My family was working. I still remember y'all. I still remember just just that that sense of I I I I, I need a savior, right? And I'm so, so thankful for that. When I got into my adult years, however, I did, I did uh, uh, go through a season of life where I, I just um, I sort of felt like I was raised in a wonderful cr Christian home and in a pretty good church situation. And I, but I started feeling that whole bubble thing, you know, and I was like, I just not, you know, I just I kind of like got really careless and really curious and sniffing around places I had no business being. And uh, some of you remember there was a gospel song written several years ago that says, sin will take you farther than you want to go and leave you longer than you want to stay. And I, I, I think about that. It's just so beautifully and uh, uh, so beautifully put. And, and, I, and certainly I, I ended up in places I had no intention of, of ever arriving. But this evening I'm just so grateful that I can say that was then and this is now and what God has done in my life is just wonderful. And I, I remember having the presence of mind in that situation just to call out to the Lord and say, Lord, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to get myself out of this. And God's been so kind and so gracious. And so this is just as, we, as we're kind of, uh, before I turn it back over, this is just kind of a song of celebration. It says, hallelujah. <laughs> I've been redeemed. I've been restored. Praise to the God who heard that honest prayer. And praise to the God who brought me back. This song kind of repeats a
You saw my deepest need, and you met me there. That's worth the whole evening, because that's exactly what he does. He sees your deepest need. He sees your, your deepest hurt, where you are, what you're feeling, where you are right now, whether you're 11, 8, 6, 9, or whether you're 99. Well, Chuck, you're not quite 99 yet. It doesn't matter where you are on this scale with God. He's just right there waiting for you to say, you know what, I can't do this without you. Thank you so much for your, your honesty, your transparency. What amazing talent you have, but thank you for giving it back to God. And that's what exactly the message is tonight. Whatever you have, you give it back to Him and watch it explode. Because with God, all things are possible. And when He's the one empowering you, anything is possible. Maybe even tonight, like you were talking, He was talking about, you know, I made this decision to give my life to Jesus. And that's why He can sing, Hallelujah, my life has been redeemed. And maybe you feel that tonight. Why don't we just pray? And, uh, and then I'll uh, close here in a second. Father, thank you for the way that you have so touched our hearts so deeply. Whether we're a child on the front row, a mom or a dad or a grandma or grandpa, wherever we fit in that, Lord, you love us all the same. And you want us to come to that place where we decide to follow you and say, Lord, I, I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Please forgive me of my sins. Please take me where I'm at. Take all the things that you've given me, and I give them back to you, all the little talents I have, all the things that I love. I give back to you. Will you take them, and will you make them what you want them to be? Lord, change me and make me your child. And like Sam was saying, help me to be obedient. What you tell me to do, God, help me to obey so that I can be your child and follow Jesus. Lord, I believe you. Jesus, you died for me, and I want you to be my Lord and my master and my savior. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm so delighted that you guys took the time to come, and moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas and everybody, thank you for taking the time to do that. I appreciate that. I know you're probably worn out because you've been working all day, but wasn't it worth it? I've been so looking forward to this, Brent. You are so stinking talented. Thank you so much for sharing with us tonight. Yeah, let's give him one more hand. We really have, we needed that. We needed it as we prayed before in a little circle down here. Let's say, Lord, just fill this place with joy tonight. And that's exactly what happened. You even sang about it. So thank you for sharing your heart. And thanks, Sam. And what was the gingerbread boy's name? Never. See, you even remember, don't you? That was so great. So great. Uh, you'll notice he has a table back there, and you have some of your books that you wrote. Is that right? Uh, and uh, maybe some of his CDs and stuff. Make sure you stop by and see what he has before you go, especially if you have kids or grandkids. Always great to have good new books to read at nighttime before you go to bed or music to play in the car to sing over and over and over again. Uh, but we are also going to be taking an offering tonight, a love offering. This is how Brent basically survives. He didn't ask for anything specific, but um, this makes all the difference in the world. His van's parked out front, and it doesn't run on love. It runs on gas. So you got to have money to put in there. And so uh, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you uh, to give tonight, would you just be obedient, like he was talking about before, and just do that? And that will be a blessing to him. And thank you once again for coming tonight. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful evening. May say hello to Brent. You want to go back out so they can say hey to you? All right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, kids, for coming in, too.